as a coordinator being at this academic forefront of design education how are you meeting these kind of industry expectations through your syllabus and teachings there are few things that needs to be get fused by the institutions in a right amount at a right time we are constantly in touch with the industry people encourage them as well as sensitize them about what is going in the industry just don't do it silently but you need to present there on the digital media so that the other world will also notice you what you are doing and this is how you can sell yourself mm. so basically it's a job of selling yourself hi everyone my name is saket and this is the design podcast many of you are going through your admission processes and one of the most commonly asked questions is regarding private colleges unfortunately nid and iits they have very limited number of seats and for n number of reasons you might not get into these colleges then the obvious question becomes whether to take a year long break and prepare again or join some private design college back in the day there were very limited options and the quality of education provided by private colleges was not that good but today i feel they have become excellent and quite equivalent to all these government colleges and i also feel in some areas they are probably providing better opportunities and facilities compared to government colleges one of such colleges is mit id It's located very near to Pune where I stay. They have a beautiful campus and excellent facilities. The way they have been growing, I must say it is one of the strong options which students should consider. And also they have probably the best clay studio in the Indian design scene and this is exactly where we shot today's podcast. We had Mr. Kiran Tuplonde who is the head of transportation design in MIT ID and I took this opportunity to ask him about what are the common myths, what are the common misunderstandings related to this design field what are the future opportunities what are the scopes and why one should consider joining transportation design at the same time i asked him many questions related to mit and private colleges and how they are structuring their entire syllabus to cope up with the current competition and current requirement from the industry this is an amazing conversation and we have touched upon so many things if you are an aspiring student this is a must watch podcast for you before we start the podcast i want to sincerely thank mit id for supporting us and providing such a beautiful location to shoot the podcast all their links are mentioned below in the description you must go and check all the disciplines all the description which is given and you can probably try and visit their campus as well to get a better understanding having said that without any further ado let's start this wonderful conversation hi kiran first of all uh, welcome to the design podcast and i must say thank you for doing this uh, we have been talking about this for almost 2 uh, 3 months now yeah. we have been discussing about this and uh, i'm so glad that finally we are able to do this and thanks for inviting us to this wonderful facility of mit you know we are sitting in clay studio and i think this is definitely by far one of the best studios i have ever seen so you know seeing full one is to one scale models of vehicles cars and bikes it is so amazing and it's so emotionally you know exciting for a designer like me so yeah very very happy to do this and thank you for inviting us over here yeah pleasure is so mine and i also want to thank you for considering me for this podcast yeah so uh, there are there are so many things to talk about but because uh, you are the coordinator and head of uh, transportation design i have several questions related to academics because you know it's very difficult for aspiring designers to get that insight what is happening in the colleges what is the scope of design education what is going to be the future opportunities all those things are kind of mystery only i, I feel and i want to take this opportunity to ask you all these questions for those who don't know uh, kiran and me we are from the same batch we in fact gave our studio test together uh, later we decided to go in different directions but yeah it's a full circle i feel so i want to ask you this like since then like back in i think 2011 we gave the studio yeah. right so since then do you feel that the design landscape has changed in certain areas yeah definitely it has got changed so earlier the facilities was not that much of available for us and uh, you know internet media uh, was also very limited for us so it was i mean you know getting in touch with your batchmates seniors and this is how we used to learn 
but nowadays the internet has grown so much so that it is you know it is you can see that it's everyone's pocket and everyone can reach out to anything anywhere yeah. uh, very easily and everything is very easily accessible to everyone so i think that is what have made the design you know reachable to everyone and this is how the you know awareness about the design has got reached to the uh, uh, smaller part of the world yeah i would say and uh, because of that many of the people are getting attracted towards this education aspect so it's true that the landscape has got changed and industry demands are also changing with the okay. time because the you know fastest growing industry and their inclination toward the electrification of the vehicles are also demanding the new things to be done in a very you know specific time and that is also demanding the different you know talents to be have along with the basic core design mm. uh, you know uh, education needs to be equipped with the extra you know things to be attached to it interesting so you are saying uh, i liked what you said about industry expectation uh definitely even i feel that ki uh, jab bhi students ke portfolios wagera aate hain to uh, i feel the industry expectations has gone up exponentially yeah. from where we were uh, i think back then uh, access to you know minimal things like uh, catching tablets and all was like a big struggle but aaj ki date mein sab kuch available hai to because of that i think the industry is also demanding more and more so i want to ask you this uh how as a coordinator and you know uh being at this academic forefront of design education uh how are you meeting these kind of industry expectations through your syllabus and teaching so yeah it's a good question i think you know the academic is a uh, uh, is a pivotal uh point to navigate the this design education towards a right direction uh, uh, for the design aspirants because this is the start where they get introduced to the design process mm-hmm. first and then when they get into the industry at, of course they uh, you know get the real test of the world uh, but before that they get ready you know this is a rehearsal sort of thing they do at the design institute basically and for that purpose i think the design institutes needs to be you know well equipped with all the knowledge and forecasting for what going to be the direction in the future for the industry and same needs to be inculcated in the courses that they are getting taught to the students okay mm-hmm. so this is how we can shape the future designers uh, in a right direction so they must be bringing their own talent and you know passion uh, with them but you know there are few things that needs to be get fused by the you know institutions mm-hmm. uh, in a right amount at the right time so that they will choose their paths accurately in the future though there is no accuracy as such i mean one need to understand it with the time but during the you know education at certain point they realize like where their taste lies and so that they can choose a direction and they can take themselves toward that direction to you know make their career in that mm. so i think it's a pivotal road so at mit id we guys are uh, quite focused on this thing and uh, we are constantly in touch with the industry people of course like you and there are many people we are inviting every time for the master classes so we are not teaching them as a, a courses or in the session or something like that but we are also inviting the industry people to you know you know uh, encourage them as well as sensitize them about what is going in the industry right now so that they will get aware like what is happening exactly at this moment and where they wants to go in the future so and what is expected from a industry from the current aspirant who are wants to be a designer and what they will be need to be equipped with at the end of their design education so that they get the direction i mean they get the idea how to navigate themselves in this profession interesting actually uh, yeah whatever you said there were so many things to address uh, but definitely the industry expectations have gone up and also i think uh, this kind of industry collaborations like calling experts and all i think uh, they play an interesting role in creating you know that additional awareness about what is going on in the industry and uh, yeah i must say that you guys are doing that because you know we have been uh, you know in collaboration for a while now and i can see that those things are happening very proactively now uh, you talked about student behavior also in between so i want to ask you this thing like since 
our time, you know, almost 10 years back or something like that. Do you see that uh, student behavior and student culture has changed in some areas? Yeah, it's a good question, I would say, Sakit. Uh, uh, you know, at our time, like, we were ready to take the efforts because the resources were very limited at that time and we were aware about the situation out there in the market. And at that time, the automotive industry was not that open, at least the global landscape. Uh, but with the time, because of the technology and the internet, the reach of internet, that this has been reached to the every individual who wants to be in this field. Either they are in liking of this field or they are really passionate about it. So I think there is a difference. So I must, you know, uh, mention this. I have seen that cult, the most of the people take this, their liking towards this field as their passion and they end up, you know, getting frustrated sometimes and they they fail to cope up with what demands are there you know you see if you want to make a career in certain uh discipline or a, a area that area is having their own demands like you need to fulfill that and until and unless you are reaching to that level you won't be get accepted in the industry so i think the transportation design most of the students actually struggles at that point only so it's not easy that, you know, you're getting into the design institute, just get a degree and this how you becomes eligible to get job anywhere out there in the world. Mm. It's not like that. I mean, you need to be uh, a person who's getting visible to the world. Okay. Nowadays, because that's what in the demand. So I'm mm. you know, continuously telling to my students as well, you know, just don't do it, you know, silently, but you need to be vocal about your own mm. and you have to be, you know, present there on the yeah digital media so that the other world will also notice you what you are doing and this is how you will be get visible and this is how you can sell yourself mm -hmm. so basically it's a job of selling yourself i mean i'm teaching that thing from the uh, very first day <laughs> so and this is how we have uh, you know equip uh, all of them uh, to make ready for this profession i mean it's not only the design how you think or how you sketch uh, it's not like that you know, this is this again how you present it, how you sell it, how you convince the other mm -hmm. people, how you are convincing your jury. So that is also important. Until you know, unless you are, uh, you know, uh, selling it prominently to the audience, uh, you are not gonna get the, you know, the outcome that you are expecting from this, basically. So uh, it's a tough job, yes, of course, but you have to, you know. Uh, Put in efforts. That Put in efforts, yeah. That are expected. Definitely. Actually, interesting something you talk about, uh, you can't just sit in one room and work uh, and then expect people to reach out to you because uh, in the morning only, uh, we were seeing a lot of uh, TEDx speaker boards yeah, yeah. Uh, while coming into MIT and uh, we were, you know, discussing the same thing that every speaker, it's like, okay, he's pilot, but at the same time, content creator. Okay, he is this person, but content creator. So, almost everyone over there, whatever we saw, uh, they are content creators. So, I think uh, the entire landscape is changing and I think it has become more than a necessity to present in all form of social media and present yourself, present your work. Now, uh, now that we are talking about all these things, I want to understand from you. Now, every year, there might be so many students who will be applying for this you know particular degree you'll be interviewing them and now this is the time when people are also preparing for designs design studio tests yeah. interviews portfolio making all those things so tell me what are the qualities you are looking for as a coordinator while selecting these students for your you know that very niche small batch of students for transportation design yeah so uh, basically we seek uh, a true passion Okay. okay, because, you know, that readiness has to be there that, you know, that you have to put in a lot of efforts into it without which you won't be able to get success. We cannot assure you the success immediately after that. I mean, you should be ready and you should be aware about the situations around. Okay, and before coming to this discipline, I would suggest to someone who really, you know, uh, aspiring to be a transportation designer, basically. So should spend some time, you know, uh, uh, scaling up oneself. So like you can practice the sketching because it's available mm -hmm. out there on my internet. There are so many channels. 
when the designers are running and you know like you also have a channel there they can educate so they can you know incorporate that into their habit you have to make it as your habit the mm. passion you have to you know immerse yourself okay mm. and uh, after that you know if when you feel that you are ready then only you should go and take step forward to you know come to this profession uh, uh, basically the education i'll also suggest yeah to you know someone who's i mean especially for the masters mm. i have seen a good card in the bachelor because they get very you know free time and they also get a good time to spend in the design institution so in a four year of time they you know develop themselves a very good designer i mean at least for the design thinking i have seen that they are more creative people compared to the master people because most of the time the master people are coming from either from the engineering background or mm. from architect background or a very few uh, people are coming from the design background but i have seen few things which are uh, not so welcoming uh, one thing is the rigidness uh, if they, they are, are coming to learn new things. yeah 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 because they are coming from a uh, engineering background so many time they are very rigid to something because uh, in a engineering that for everything you need to have some logical reason mm. right and here of course you need a logical reason to but the way of thinking it changes and you have to open up yourself mm. you know towards the new possibilities so you really need to unlearn everything that you have learned up till now and you have to sit here fresh and have to consume a lot about design and the entire design field okay basically and uh, those who are coming from the uh, you know design background uh, itself so i have found that many of them are admin so they are not ready to give up what they have learned because most of the time i have seen that only the people who might have thought that they have done some mistakes in the previous course so they want to correct it and that for that reason only they are coming into the masters mm. so otherwise there is no point doing masters after bachelors in a transportation design because this industry is quite open and uh, i haven't seen the cult in the industry that they are only accepting the masters and are not accepting the bachelors and mm. most of the openings i have seen that they are you know they put it in the oblique that you know, they can have the people either from a bachelor's background or equivalent master's background as well or from a industrial design background so i think yeah it's there yeah so actually uh, now i think we are moving to that scenario where degrees are going to get secondary i think it has already become secondary in yeah, yeah. Uh, the only thing that they are looking for is the right balance of uh, you know good skill set and good attitude as you said i think that is very important because you know many times people will be thinking that i have uh, enough level of skills so i'll be getting jobs everywhere but you know there are many such cases where they struggle to get jobs because of this particular attitude that uh, because they are so good in their work uh, they they tend to have some you know uh, what do you say as you said adamant or i can say rigidness that is a better word i guess so that rigidness makes them uh, you know that designer who can work really well when he is alone but when he is going to work with a team then i think there uh, the real challenge will come and i think when people are also looking for uh, industry employment and all that that time they are also looking for attitude and you rightly said i am very happy that you brought up this point that uh, that attitude is very important and when you are selecting i am very happy to know that that you are seeing that attitude as well while selecting so you said true passion then uh, right attitude and probably willingness to take lot of efforts because there's going to be so many challenges ahead so interesting okay if students are listening to this i think uh, this is literally the checkpoints which you have to you know take note of because the coordinator itself is telling you because he there are going to be people like him who are going to select people for their next batch i feel when it comes to specifically transportation and automobile design first of all design awareness is less in general uh, compared to other disciplines like engineering medical law and under design there are several fields and transportation design is just one of them so i want to understand from you uh, are there any misconceptions or misunderstandings related to this entire field you know you might be seeing such examples like students entered or enrolled this course thinking okay this is going to happen ahead in the course and then completely something you know fresh <laughs> set of surprises came in front of you have you observed such examples 
a few cases not much uh, but yeah so you know many times it happens that student get enrolled in this program and suddenly they realize that they are not able to cope up with what demands are there from this course and they find it difficult to maneuver themselves because it needs you know a lot of commitment from your side first and then performance of course see ultimately what quality you are producing at the end that is what going to be seen at the end at the time of hiring by the industries right so industry is not looking for from which college or which background you are coming right they just want to see what quality work you are producing and what you are bringing on the table mm. right as a designer so and after that of course you will be getting a, you are having a very good quality work in your portfolio then you will be get invited for the next round right mm. as a personal interview and all and that case you you will be tested for your attitude like are you really a person who will suit the thing which is existing there and you will be matching up with them and you know forming a unique team uh, which will be a plus point for that team okay not the negative so the attitude is also one thing and you know sometimes i have seen that tendency of the students i mean uh, they wants to work alone they are, they work secretively कुछ दिखाना नहीं किसी को है ना दे सडनली जस्ट आई हर बैच में ऐसे कुछ लोग होते ही टेका दुक्का होता है एंड आई मीन दे जस्ट वांट टू हाइड आउट व्हाट दे आर डूइंग बट दे विल बी कीप ऑन स्पाइंग ऑन द अदर्स व्हाट दे आर डूइंग जस्ट टू यू नो मेक देम अवेयर लाइक आई हैव सीन सच एग्जांपल्स बट आई थिंक शॉर्ट टर्म के लिए शायद उनको अच्छे रिजल्ट्स मिल जाते हैं बिकॉज़ दे आर कंपीटिंग बट आई थिंक लॉन्ग रन में दे फेस लॉट ऑफ इश्यूज एज यू सेड द एटीट्यूड एंड ऑल because eventually you're going to work in a team of multiple designers and every designer is going to bring in some you know new aspect of his experience so it's going to be a collective team effort and if you are someone who is working very well inside a room very secretively as you said uh it's going to be a problem for them i guess now because you are a coordinator and you have been in industry for a while now uh what is transportation design and who should do it yeah so it's a very good question actually you know most of the time it mistake in so people uh hardly see the automobile industry around it so it's not limited to the automotive industry at all i mean there are commercial vehicles there are logistics involved uh there is a water you know transportation then there is a air transportation everything is included so nobody think of the you know railways nobody thinks of the boats or the water transport uh then the uh, air transport i mean the vertical take off machines are there i mean nowadays it's a trend right there yeah. are drones so nobody uh you know look at uh, looking at the transportation design as a big spectrum and within which they can find a very crisp spot where they can you know make their career i mean uh i i have seen lot of uh, you know um, opportunities coming from the bombardier and the alstom but yeah. i mean uh, eventually they end up getting nobody from the industry and big time you know the students also failing uh, that there are opportunities uh, lying there but they are having a very uh, less amount of a knowledge about the positions available in the industry so you know uh, i want to highlight this thing because even when i joined this uh, transportation design course i wanted to be a automotive exterior designer mm. okay and that was the only role known to me okay uh, but when i entered into this discipline then i started realizing that there are multiple roles and when i got into the industry actually then i started as a industrial designer mm. my career and i i got a opportunity to work on the smaller part of a seat and this is how my journey started so uh, at right. earlier it was a little bit disappointing to me because i wanted always wanted to be a exterior designer and i got into that but uh, somehow i was determined about the commercial vehicles that area i always you know uh, admired and i always have seen the scope uh, to design and mm-hmm. i took that as a challenge and that was chosen by me mm-hmm. so uh, it doesn't matter whether i was working on the component or not but eventually that small start gave me a very good vision for the future after some time working on uh, the smaller projects and then i eventually moved on to the you know designing the complete set for the bus and 
After that, I went to design the complete interior of the ambulance, which gave me another vision. And then I started understanding the true meaning of the design. So design is not only associated with the aesthetic. Okay. So it comes with multiple things that you can resolve creatively. So basically what we say that, you know, design is, you know, solving the problem creatively. It's in a true way, a characteristic of a designer that they are God blessed you know, with this unique uh, feature of, you know, solving the problem creatively, I would say. And uh, we designers should be embracing it. Yeah, of course, of course. I can't agree more with this because uh, design is at the core, it's problem solving. And uh, I understand where these students are coming from because since childhood, they have collected car scale models and things like that. Of course, there's this emotional attachment with that product as, you know, car, which was... Uh, you know, emotional, which stood for status and all those things. Uh, but as you said, I'm glad you covered so many areas where a transportation design can go and work and solve problems. I think, uh, as you said, railways, uh, plain cockpit, uh, interiors, uh, there are so many avenues, personal mobility, wheelchair design, uh, drones, that's another area. And I'm, I'm so happy to see that the drone is looking with the perspective of mobility. Uh, it's not just a flying device. Now it has got this another angle uh, to its use case. So that's that's a beautiful scenario which uh, students can explore and look into. So yeah, all those areas are very, very fascinating, I must say. Now I want to understand what is the future scope of transportation design? So scopes are evolving and it is been evolving and it has got evolved to the extent where you know multiple roles has come under this discipline so it's not only limited to the exterior design or interior design or a cmf designer i would say but there are multiple role has been got added to it so one can go for the digital sculpting one can go for the hmi design one can go for the you know quality control of a design and the mm. perseverance and uh, basically uh, design quality Mm -hmm. at the end uh, then you have a research area where you can be an uh, expert okay a few of my colleagues are working as a design researchers only I mean their job is to you know research the market and come up with a brief that you know brief will be going to the design team and that's how the design team will be starting working on that so apart from that you have uh, you know careers related to the uh, digital sculpting that you can go either go into the modeling or you can continue it uh, with the visualizer or a CG artist. So these uh, all roles are demanding nowadays a lot, and uh, it's it's growing basically, and it's also emerging at the same time. So you cannot limit it to the uh, automotive, uh, maybe the sketching or something like that. But you have to expand your horizon to the next level where you can actually you know have to onboard the UX design, then you know graphic design at to some extent. Then again, uh, you also need to incorporate some somewhere, you know, uh, space design because this all you know, the the boundaries it had earlier are demolishing uh, yes. slowly because the space is becoming important nowadays, and uh, because of the electrification is also allowing us to get more space inside without expanding outside. Okay, and that's what you know presented by uh, Vinya. Uh, the uh, you know, Tata has set a good example about it. So it's actually changing and it's also coming up with a lot of opportunities. So definitely the scope of transportation design is changing. Uh, here we are just talked about the automobile industry. I would say even the you know the bike industry has got evolved too. Uh, especially talking about the Indian market, you can see that earlier the 150 cc was the hot selling at our. Yeah. Teenage, uh, nowadays the 400 cc is nothing you yeah, know that is ready to accept new, yeah <laughs> yeah and very soon the 650 will also become a normal yeah. and yeah this is how the things are going and it's also coming up with a lot of you know opportunities so in here in india the people want a bike which will perform well at the same time they want to use it for everyday ride mm -hmm. so you know this is also coming up with a lot of challenges for the designers and it's again, you know, uh, giving you the opportunity to uh, design a specific product which will suit the market at the same time. Similarly, if I go and see the commercial market or the, you know, the the, the space where uh, the trucks and uh, the buses are a little bit not paid so much of attention, but there is also a huge potential, I'd say, 
uh, trucks are evolving. Our uh, government is also started taking more of initiative. So, uh, uh, at the last time when I heard uh, Nitin Gadkari ji, when he said that you know the no truck will be you know made uh, on the road, which will not have a AC. So basically, they are you know uh, emphasizing on having the ACs compulsory in the uh, all the trucks and all. And he is also committed that the journey of the truck driver will not exceed more than two hours. So it's also coming up with their logistic policies, the freight, you know, dedicated freight corridors, the uh, dedicated freight lines for the railways, uh, upgraded interiors for the railways. So I think railways haven't changed for the past 60, 70 years, I guess. Railways uh, have got a lot of potential earlier. It was ignored completely. But nowadays I see that, you know, it's, it's carrying the huge potential and nobody wants to see it as an opportunity for the future. I haven't seen much of the designers inclined towards it, but I would say it's a good opportunity for a designers, and you, you can you know set yourself to that uh, area where nobody is looking at. I mean, where is less competition? Why you want not to go for that? Ultimately, it's a design, mm -hmm. and it's also coming up with uh, a lot of opportunities to uh, discover mm -hmm. and. Continuing that, uh, last time uh, one of our students actually worked on a completely bogey design. You know, okay. uh, so basically, he come up with a proposal uh, for a live project. Uh, I cannot disclose the studio name and uh, project as well, but he worked on the interiors of the bogies that are there. Mm. So he had the constraints of the existing bogey sizes and all, but still he enjoyed it a lot. You know, restructuring everything, and he re looked at it and come up with a very nice proposal for that. Mm. So I would say it's opening up uh, for the students. So this is how the scope is, and again, uh, the airspace is also you know ignored earlier. It was uh, taken by the you know, aircraft designers only, and that was too uh, limited to the aeronautical designers. But at the same time, you know, designers have a chance to work on it. So the vertical takeoff drones uh, can be a good opportunity. Okay, so just to summarize, you are saying uh, transportation design is not just limited to two, three products now. The scope has evolved exponentially. And secondly, even under every product, uh, there are multiple avenues where designer can, you know, become an expert and solve different, different problems. So in all, I think uh, there are so many more opportunities compared to before. And definitely the scope looks very bright and exciting for transportation design. Uh, now that uh, just one of the last questions, uh, I want to understand when we talked about all these things, uh, do you think teaching design or teaching transportation design takes some special efforts and techniques? Because I feel design is a different discipline. It has its own, you know, unique pros and cons. So I'm pretty sure there will be challenges uh, when it comes to teaching design as well. What do you think about that? So, uh, yeah, it's a very good question. I don't know about the other institutes, but uh, at uh, our, our institute, MIT Institute of Design, uh, Loni, what we are practicing is, uh, it, we are not calling it as a teaching. Uh, we are calling it as a mentoring. So because basically the design aspirant have to have some creativity in his mind. You know, it should be inherent. And then we actually shaping him or her okay. towards their you know goal of mm. becoming a designer. So how we are doing it, we are actually inculcating the industry practices here, and uh, we are practicing it regularly. So whatever the sessions that we deliver, those are actually basically the discussions that we you know uh, take with the design students. And after that, every part of their deliverables where they have to present it in front of the panel of the faculties. So we sit as a jury and they have to present it in front of us. So that the first thing they will not have the hesitation or uh, any uncomfort while presenting it in front of the mm -hmm. people. And that is what the practice uh, is there in the industry, right? This is how you deliver your uh, design presentation. So basically they have to put up everything, whatever they have done. Okay, the, they have to keep their skins ready and they have to deliver it as a professional. So basically we build, you know, we want to bring the professionalism into them from a first day. Mm -hmm. And what are the practices that we do? It's actually, you know, aligned with uh, industry only, whatever the practices are there in the industry. So basically 
and uh, sometimes they have to work individually considering the course outcomes and uh, sometimes they have to work in the teams as well so because they want to be a good team player out there it is not going to happen that they are going to get the individual project where they will be working independently it's not possible for individual to do a complete project by their own so of course it's a team efforts and how to align themselves along with the other people who are coming from the same ego that they are having and you know the, the different skill set they are having so how they can collaborate and how they can learn from each other so basically we emphasize more on the peer learning apart from the you know the inputs that we give to them so it's you know it's a mix of all uh, but basically we are working uh, as a industry and that's why we call us the learning space as a studios we uh-huh. don't call it as a classrooms we yeah. call it as a studios and we ourselves call as a mentors not as a faculty mm-hmm. very interesting i think uh, what you said makes lot of sense because uh, because it's a masters uh, course uh, already students are coming with you know their own set of goals and dreams so uh, what they need is more than teaching i think what they need is mentoring so yeah. wherever they are going or deviating from the their dream and wherever basically they are not doing right things i think you are there to you know bring them back to the track so uh, wonderful and i also like that thing that uh, from this point itself you are inculcating that uh, culture of having that professional attitude in them so that when they move to the industry they will not have any problem that's it awesome now uh, coming to the last question uh, i want to ask you that do you have any one specific concluding advice for everyone who is in the design industry i think uh, in most of the uh, podcasts that you have showed uh, almost everyone has given those inputs uh, to the people who are already in this profession or in this uh, discipline they are already you know learning but still i would say uh, you know uh you have to be very clear about your goal first you know and uh, so you have to find yourself where you are fitting okay so uh there is no harm identifying yourself if you are not fitting into the goal that is desired to you but you can plan accordingly so it's not necessary that you always land up there where you wanted to be so you can take a another route so which is you know uh, if you are getting a role of uh, some other uh, opportunity where you are going to be a designer but not into the stream or the role that you are expecting so get into that first okay uh, get habitual to it learn many things around there because it's again the same setup only the roles are different and prepare yourself towards it so let's say for example uh, someone who wants to be a exterior designer okay and uh, but for some reasons because there is a huge competition for this position Uh, and last time i saw uh, on a linkedin for one position there were the filed applications okay okay i i saw this on the linkedin and or like for the exterior design for exterior card card design okay. yeah uh, and i showed this to the my student as well okay mm. so make them aware about the uh, reality around there so one can do a uh, planning if you are getting opportunity to join as a cmf designer if you are good at it initially and uh, you want to start your career so better to get into the industry and this industry is quite open that you can switch any time your role provided you are you know preparing yourself uh, towards it so instead of taking a back foot and you know not uh, accepting the opportunity which is coming on your way and just waiting for the right opportunity i mean that time has gone now yeah. actually this this is so powerful uh, so i just remembered couple of incidences where student came to me saying uh, automobile design mein opportunities hi nahi hai so and i think the answer which you gave is specifically that answer which i would like to tell them i will suggest them to go and check our website we have enlisted whatever the roles i mean the major roles that we have mentioned it's are about uh, 25 roles that we have mentioned on the website openly okay. so these are the opportunities that you can be in the design field you know awesome i think uh, keeping your eyes open and not being very adamant about one particular product is i think that final advice you gave which is very powerful i i would say and uh, with that uh, i want to thank you again for doing this this was a very very insightful a very candid yet valuable conversation 
I'm sure uh, aspiring designers who are watching this would have gained some new perspectives, some clarity about this field of transportation design. So uh, thanks again for doing this. It has been a wonderful time here. Thank you, Sakit, for giving me this opportunity. Actually, uh, you, I, I want to say thanks to you as well as my team, uh, which is you know sitting behind me and you know they are supporting me. So without them, it is not possible to run the show. So I have thanks to all of them. Yeah, of course, my student as well. No, thanks to all of them and thanks to MIT as well for providing this beautiful setup for shooting the podcast. So uh, thank you again and hope to see you soon. Sure.